Let's take a look at what's harder, Navy SEAL Basic Underwater Demolition Training or the Army Special Forces Qualification Course. Being a retired Special Forces Lieutenant Colonel, I have had the privilege of working with Navy SEALs all over the world. And while everyone likes to watch movies about elite members of the Special Operations community, I often think that comparing the two forces and their training pipelines and missions is sometimes like comparing apples and oranges. Let me explain the differences between the two training pipelines using the following criteria. Duration and phases, entry requirements, fitness, graduation rates, food, sleep, and suck factor. And then we will finish off with a more important discussion about fit and mission sets. In November, we celebrate both Veterans Day and Thanksgiving. I'm going to donate 100% of all profits from merchandise this November to the Green Beret Foundation. Be sure to support the channel and the Green Beret Foundation by buying a t-shirt, a cap, or a mug. Now let's get back to your video. For enlisted men with SEAL contracts, you start the process by shipping out to the Naval Special Warfare Prep School in Great Lakes, Illinois. NSW prep is two months, and then you head to Coronado, California and begin SEAL training, also known as Basic Underwater Demolition, or BUDS. BUDS is 24 weeks long and consists of multiple phases. You start out with three weeks of indoctrination, or INDOC. Phase one is physical conditioning, which is seven weeks. The infamous Hell Week is part of this phase. Phase two, combat diving, is also seven weeks and Phase 3 Land Warfare is 7 weeks. After BUDS, SEAL candidates go to jump school, which is 3 weeks, and then they head to SEAL Qualification Training, or SQT, which is 26 weeks long. And then you get your Budweiser and are officially a Navy SEAL. All in all, this is 61 weeks of world-class training. If you want to learn more about BUDS, then check out my video focused completely on the Navy SEAL pipeline where I discuss the training in greater detail. Now let's switch to Army Special Forces, or SF training. SF candidates can enlist directly into SF. This is called the 18 X-ray program. I've already made a detailed video about this pipeline. But most Special Forces candidates spend a few years in the regular Army before heading out to the Special Forces Qualification Course, or Q Course. The Q Course consists of Special Forces Assessment and Selection, which is 24 days long, followed by several phases of training. The SF Orientation Course is a week-long introduction into the Special Operations Community. MOS Phase and SEER are now 15 weeks. MOS stands for Military Occupational Specialty. This is where medics learn anatomy and trauma medicine. Engineers learn how to build and blow stuff up. Weapon sergeants learn how to employ every weapon you can imagine. The commo guys learn how to use sophisticated computers and communication devices, and officers learn to plan. SEER school is world-class survival, evasion, resistance, and escape training. Then candidates have a week of basic airborne refresher, six weeks of tactical skills where you master squad and platoon level patrolling. Robin Sage is a three week long unconventional training event. And then you have 16 to 24 weeks of language training. Some graduates also go to advanced skill training like SCUBA or HALO school before going to a Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha, or A-Team. But the absolute minimum time to make it through the Q course is 45 weeks. Entry requirements for both soft units are similar, but there are some nuances. For SEALs, the requirements are passing a vision test, you can't be colorblind, no older than 28 years old, pass a medical physical exam, be a U.S. citizen, eligible for a secret clearance, and pass minimum requirements for the Physical Screening Test, or PST. For Special Forces, candidates must be at least an E3 or a PFC, be at least 20 years old but no older than 36, be eligible for a secret clearance, and have an ASVAB of 100 or higher. In order to even get your foot in the door for SEAL training, you need to hit the competitive standards of the physical screening test. The PST has five events, a 500 meter swim, which is breaststroke or side stroke, 
which the average SEAL does in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Push-ups, the average SEAL does 75. Max curl-ups or sit-ups, the average is 75. Max pull-ups, the average is 15. And a 1.5 mile run, which the average SEAL does in 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Please note that it doesn't pay to be average. If you want to be the best of the best, you better be exceptional. Initial SEAL training is water focused, with a lot of time in the cold waters of Southern California. Hell Week is a grueling five and a half day stretch where each candidate sleeps for only four total hours, but runs more than 200 miles, and does physical training for more than 20 hours per day. The physical requirements for the remaining phases of training are less for harassment and more to prepare for combat and tactical training. This includes ruck marches, subsurface infills, patrolling with heavy rucks, and close quarters combat with heavy body armor. I've never met an out of shape Navy SEAL, and to overstate the obvious, fitness is a way of life for those within the SEAL community. The physical standards for the Q course are also high, but they don't publish them. They just encourage you to give 100%. Sometimes they point you down a road and they tell you to ruck or to run until they tell you to stop. You don't know if it's going to be 2 miles or 12 miles, so you have to decide how much you want to give, which better be 100%. When I arrived to the Special Forces Q course, I could do 18 pull-ups, 82 sit-ups in 2 minutes, 82 perfect push-ups in 2 minutes, run a 630 mile, and ruck all day long. Compared to my peers, I felt like my overall physical fitness was below average. So let's say these are the minimum physical standards. It's also interesting to note that each phase of Special Forces training got harder. Many think selection would be the worst, but then they have heavier rucks and longer distance during small unit tactics. And then the rucks are even heavier and the infill even longer during Robin Sage. I want to take a quick break to let you know that I have a 12 week unconventional fitness program designed to shred body fat, increase cardiovascular efficiency and muscular strength, teach or reinforce essential self-defense techniques, build confidence and increase physical and mental performance. But I've also made an eight day workout program deliberately calculated to test and validate aspiring members of the special operations community. I didn't make this fitness program to steal money from naive kids. I made this fitness program to show a future soft operator what an easy week of training is going to look and feel like. Better to quit after downloading a $10 fitness program than four weeks into a four year enlistment. And this brings us to graduation rates. The attrition rates for SEAL and SF training fluctuate each year, but SEAL attrition averages around 75%. So out of 100 physically qualified men who start BUDS, only 25 will graduate. SF selection has a 53% attrition rate, and so of the 47% who pass selection, 35% are kicked out during the Q course. This makes an overall attrition rate of 70%. I think the key factor here is to understand that only the best and healthiest make it through training. Someone truly committed is never scared of a 70% washout rate. But don't be naive, go in prepared. I've made detailed videos about eating during soft training and how much food and sleep deprivation you can expect during different training pipelines. But the takeaway here is that both schools require a mental and physical toughness that is quickly becoming obsolete. Most people can't even imagine the pain and discomfort you have to endure to finish Hell Week. But likely, anyone watching this video at least knows that Hell Week is the ultimate endurance event. What I always feel compelled to mention is the fact that special operations training is heavy. Heavy rucks. Heavy body armor. You need to expect to patrol and move all day long, for days without sleep. You will be required to fireman's carry your buddy off the battlefield. During training you will rehearse this often. Of course there will be days when you can really chow down and eat as much as you want. But there will also be days when you can only eat what you have the strength and foresight to pack and carry. I think the largest difference between the two pipelines is the water. SEALs are in dark and cold water all of the time. 
One in six Green Berets is on a dive team, but even so, our dive training is usually at the end of the pipeline and in the warm waters of Key West. I can, however, remember dozens of times shaking and shivering as in a state of convulsion. For example, I lost 16 pounds in three weeks at SEER school, and it took me six weeks after graduation to get any feeling back in the bottom of my feet. But the meanness and coldness of the Pacific Ocean takes harassment and exhaustion to the next level. So know what you're getting into and bring your physical and mental A-game. If you're interested in developing the champion mindset of the best trained and most elite forces in the world, then check out my most recent project, Special Operations Mindset. I have it as an ebook, a paperback, and a five-hour course. I'll leave links below. Now let's finish off with the more important questions about where I would fit in better and mission sets. I don't want to make fun of you, but the amateur asks how hard is Navy SEAL training? How hard is the Q course? But the professional asks, what do these guys do? What are their missions? An amateur says, I want to be a Navy SEAL. I want to be a Green Beret. A professional says, I want to do what Navy SEALs do. I want to do what Green Berets do. The key here is to do what you want to do. Join the community that you want to and where you would enjoy the missions and join the one that would be a better fit for you. SEAL's main functions are conducting small unit maritime military operations that originate from and return to a river, ocean, swamp, delta, or coastline. SEAL missions include direct action warfare, special reconnaissance, counterterrorism, and foreign internal defense. Special forces missions include foreign internal defense, special reconnaissance, direct action, counterinsurgency, foreign humanitarian assistance, and unconventional warfare. Mostly, being a Green Beret is about unconventional warfare, or UW. It's about working by, with, and through our allies and partners to fight a common threat. You can't or wouldn't be a good SF guy if you're not excited about deploying to a foreign country and teaching warfare to our brothers in arms in a foreign language with the goal to free the oppressed. Okay, there you have it. A quick difference between the Navy SEALs and Green Berets. Let me know where you would rather work, SEAL or SF, and why in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to join my Life as a Special Operations team and to forward this video to a friend who needs to see it. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?